Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise the Lord for today. And I want to welcome you to today's service. And especially hearing the word of God. I pray that you be blessed. Let's open up with the word of prayer. Father in heaven, we bless your holy name. We thank you for this opportune time. To deliver your word. Would you anoint us? Help us to deliver your counsel with precision. Exactitude and accuracy. Let your people be blessed as they hear your word. And as we know, your word doesn't come just for information. It comes for transformation. Our prayers that lives will be transformed to the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amina. I'm Edward Chivirango. And the topic God has placed on our hearts today it says that midst all uncertainty, <laughs> I want to tell you today our God is still in charge. We are shaken in every direction. Businesses are shaken. Families are shaken. Ministries are shaken. There's a lot of fear in the air. If your business is not shaken and you're doing well, then you have a fear if you survive tomorrow because of COVID-19. It's a time where people are gripped with fear. But despite all this, I'm here to tell you that our God is still in charge. Our God still reigns. Hallelujah. I want you to know that and take it serious as from the throne of God. That despite the challenges and the shakings of today, the Lord still reigns. Hallelujah. Amen. Hard times and shakings have not just begun this year. People have been experiencing this. And I want to take you to the book of Isaiah. Where there was an experience in Israel. In scripture, I often use the example of Israel. Because Israel is God's firstborn. It's from Israel that Abraham came. And we are children of God because of Abraham. Because we are men and women of faith. And the father of all faith is Abraham. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 1 says, chapter 7 of Isaiah. These were hard times. War was, there was an impending war. When Ahaz, son of Jonathan, the son of Uzziah was king of Judah. King Rezin of Aram and Pekah, son of Remaria, king of Israel, marched up to fight against Jerusalem. But they could not overpower it. Now the house of David was told. Aram has allied itself with Ephraim. So the hearts of Ahaz and his people were shaken. Take note of that. Their hearts were shaken. As the trees of the forest are shaken by the wind. Wow, what a description. 
Their hearts were shaken. As the trees of the forest are shaken by the wind. It was a time of danger. They knew that they are finished. But the Bible goes on to say. Then the Lord said to Isaiah. Go out you and your son. Shia Jabosh. Go out and your son Shia Jashub to meet Ahaz at the end of the aqueduct of the upper pool. Verse, verse 4 says, Say to him, Be careful, keep calm, and do not be afraid. Do not lose heart because of these two smoldering stabs of firewood. Because the fierce hang of resin and aram of the sons of Remaria. God was trying to give an assurance to King Ahaz that I'm still in charge. He told him, do not lose heart. I'm there for you. I'll fight on your behalf. I hear the Lord say, we should be encouraged amid this fear, amid this losses. God is encouraging us today that he's still in charge. Hallelujah. Amen. This is a time of being tested with fire. And I picked a verse from uh, 1 Corinthians. We're going to contextualize it in our situation. Paul here was talking about the church and the need to build on a firm foundation of Jesus. Not on any other foundation. But he goes on and says that every work shall be tested. It depends on which material you have built your work. It depends on which material you built your Christian life. You build on grass, on gold, or silver. First Corinthians 3, around, around 12. Are you there? If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is. Because that they will bring it to light, it will be revealed with fire and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss. This is a time of testing. The challenges we are going through today, the fear of death is roaming around as never before. But let's put our confidence in the Lord. Which material have you used to build your foundation? Actually, we've started seeing people's materials manifest. Fire is consuming their materials. People are falling left and right. People are giving up. Because the fire is intense today. God forbid that you give up. Please build on gold. Build on precious stones. Build on Jesus Christ. 
the author and finish of our faith. Oyo mutandisi era omaliza wo muri wo kukiriza kwa kufu. We actually live in unprecedented times. Era tulimbisera ebi bitutamanyiko. Some of the things we are experiencing we've never seen them before. Ebi tubine ebi byetu yitamu to tubiberanga mukko. We are hearing and experiencing lockdown for the very first time. Tuli wanonga tulaba okugalibwa omulundi okusoka. At least for a few years I've been around I've never seen such a thing. E myaka mitono jemba dewonze chintu chino bale where somebody with a car can't drive it around any time. At least during times of war I've heard of curfews. At least but not these kinds of lockdowns. For us we are in Kampala here during the wars of 1980s. So we had people being blocked that side of Masaka in the west. For us we are continuing with the school. And actually when the NRM came in January 26, uh, 1986,. I remember by that time I was going to school. So these are uh, unprecedented times. We've never experienced them before. But God is saying, I'm there. I'm still in charge. I'm on the throne. In the name of Jesus. We want to believe that word. We want to take that word. We want to plug into God. We want to believe God at such a time. When everyone is giving up. When everyone is gripped with fear. I beseek you that stand strong in the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to read at length this word God gave us at the beginning of the year. I read a post on WhatsApp. And somebody was regretting, saying, Please, if I wished you up a new year at the beginning of the year, I'm very sorry. <laughs> Implying that things turned out the other way around. Uh, for me, I want to confess that the year can still be good. And it's good in Jesus name. Verse 1 of Isaiah 54. Sing barren woman. You have never bore a child. Burst into songs. Shout for joy. You were never in labor because more are the children of the desolate woman than her who had had a husband. Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. Wow, this was a prophecy by Isaiah. Predicting the future for Israel. The future glory for Israel. When you see what's going around us, you will see no future. But God is saying, we have a future. Let's enlarge. Let's stretch. Let's lengthen. Let's strengthen. For you spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dispose the nations and settle in their desolate cities. Not this. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. You not be put to shame. Do not fear disgrace. Do not be humiliated. You will forget the shame of your youth. And remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. That's what the Lord is saying. For your maker is your husband. The Lord Almighty is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. Husbands are known for provision. 
I've seen many women say, now I'm alone with the children, no husband. So they believe when you have a husband, at least you have somebody. But if even, today even husbands are not doing well. And God is showing us the real husband. Verse 5. For your maker is your husband. The Lord Almighty is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. He is called the God of all earth. The Lord will call you back and if you were a wife deserted and distressed in spirit, the wife of a married young only to be rejected. For a brief moment, I abandoned you. But with deep compassion, I will bring you back. Some of us may look at our situations and see as if God has abandoned you. But take this word serious. For a brief moment, I abandoned you. But with deep compassion, I will bring you back. The Lord will bring back all that we've lost. In the name of Jesus. He goes on to say, verse 8. In a surge of anger, I hide my face from you for a moment. But your love, compassion on you says the Lord your Redeemer. One more verses and we shall be done. To me this is like the days of Noah. When I saw that the waters of Noah never again covered the earth. So now I have so not to be hungry with you. Never to rebuke you again. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, hear this. If you ignore the other we've read, at least take this very serious. Yet my failing love for you will not be shaken. Nor my covenant of peace be removed. Says the Lord who has compassion on you. Hallelujah. Amina. The Lord is saying. His compassion remain with us. His love for us will not be shaken. Father we bless you. We thank you. Despite the challenges we go through. You are still on the throne. You are still our God. You reign in sovereignty. You reign in power. That's why we worship you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, there is a lot of death left and right. But God is saying, I'll keep you. I'll be on your side. Yes, let's keep the SOPs. Let's be responsible as believers. It is very unfortunate to see an irresponsible believer. Actually, the things of mask and being careful, we should be the pioneers of this. We should be an example. Hallelujah. Amen. But above all, we should know that it's God who is in charge. It is him who is in charge. You know, you know, for me, I read my Bible very carefully. And I meditate upon the words I read there. At one time, Jesus said, Who of you, because of your worry, can add a day on your time? When you are to go by there, you can't do much. But of course, I'm not saying that you should be adamant and you're not careful. 
but no one thing that God reigns above every situation. He is the one in charge of your life. And the moment you know that, you will be able to work together with him to ensure that you live a happy life. There are many promises we have in scripture about God coming up to protect us and cover us and be our comfort. I love Psalms 46. We shall read through speedily. But please, just pick every nuance, pick everything from there. Squeeze the juice out of this psalm. Wow, it's enjoyable reading the word of God. Never read the word as reading a textbook. Because the word is life. God is communicating life to us. Hear what he says in Psalms 46. As we face this challenging time. Verse 1. God is our refuge and strength. An ever present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar form and the mountain shake with their surging. The mountains, the oceans, the surging, the storms, all these are just metaphors explaining what we go through. Though you are challenged with not enough money, though you don't know where you get your next meal, though you are being sent out of the house, though you have no future, according to your perception, Verse 4 says there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. The holy place where the most high dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will part break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. Hallelujah. When God lifts up his voice, the kingdoms and the earth melts. Hear this assurance. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Even amid this coronavirus, even amid this uh, hopelessness and poverty. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. It goes on to say, Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolation he has brought on the earth. It makes wars to cease to the ends of the earth. It breaks the bow and shatters the spear. God is able to destroy the weapons of the enemy. He's able to deal with the pangs of affliction. He burns the shields with fire. Listen to this. He says, Be still and know that I'm God. I'll be exalted among nations. I'll be exalted in the earth. May the Lord be exalted in our situation, in our hopelessness. Let the Lord be exalted in the nation of Uganda. My prayers that the Lord shall be exalted because He's our rescue. These are everything we should look up unto the Lord because it's our fortress at such a time. Psalms 125. Hallelujah. We're going to navigate into a lot of scriptures today. 
And I know we are being blessed. There is hope. Because Jesus is on the throne. 125 verse 1. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. Those cannot be shaken, but endures forever. When we trust in the Lord, we shall be like Mount Zion. We shall not be shaken. We shall endure forever. At the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surround his people, both now and forever. The sept of the wicked will not remain over the land allotted to the righteous. For then the righteous might use their hands to do evil. The sept of the wicked shall not be put on our inheritance. And we shall not rise to do evil. Even in this difficult season. Hallelujah. Psalms 112. We're going backwards now a bit. We shall only pick verse 6. Surely the righteous will never be shaken. They will be remembered forever. We shall not be shaken. What we need is to be righteous. As the wicked is being shaken, all the wicked are being shaken. We shall stand forever. Hallelujah. Amen. Here, this confession of uh, David, the man after God's own heart. In Psalm 62. Psalm 62. Verse 2. Truly the Lord is my rock. And my salvation. He is my fortress. I shall never be shaken. We shall never be shaken. Although we are tested, we are tried left and right. The Lord is our rock. The Lord is our salvation. We shall not be shaken. Hallelujah. Amen. He has given us this assurance. Let's cling on this assurance. Let's be like the wise man Jesus talks about. Who built his house on a rock. When the storms and fierce winds came, they could not remove it. Unlike the foolish man who built on sand, and when the storm came, the wind came and swept the house. And the Bible says it fell. And not only falling, but they first said that the fall was great. And great was the fall. We refuse to fall with a storm in the name of Jesus. We are not falling with a storm this season. Because the Lord is on our side. What is God saying to you? A few observations I picked. This is a time to support one another. Unless you hold somebody's hand, you can't consider yourself successful. If you are doing well, please, hold somebody's hand. Help somebody out. I remember we have, we have uh, a neighbor. God pressed it on our hearts to support him because he has a big family and the border border rider. And you know when there was a, you know the border border are not allowed to work. 
the family didn't have anything to feed on and that created a burden on our heart so we tried our family our best as a family and, and also mobilize others actually even church here contributed that was our burden and you know when the border was a resumed work the guys now sorted we no longer have that burden you know when I was meditating upon that thing I said God create as many as uh, as possible of such people that we shall carry one another's burden. And I want to assure you the Lord shall bless you for that. May God give you that heart. You should be an answer to somebody's prayer. You should be provide comfort for those who are hopeless. We have a challenge today. We have this mentality. Our thinking is you know, confined to our own perspectives. The way we see things. Because for you can manage, you can afford something, you just assume. You take it for granted that everyone can afford. You be like this child you ask your mother. Uh, the neighbors have a car. Where is our car? Uh, thinking, you know, for, for the child thought a uh, car is a normal thing in the home. So if neighbors have it, we are also supposed to have it. Some believers think that way when they can afford and manage five meals a day we take it for granted that even other people can manage may the Lord give us wisdom may he help us think like adults and Christian adults for me that has been my burden May the Lord prepare us to, to care about other people. To carry one another's burden. Because it's a difficult season. Some of you think it stopped with the lockdown when it started to be eased. But people are still carrying the aftermath of the, of the lockdown. <sighs> Young people at home need support. Mothers need support. Husbands need support. Actually, this has been a time for checkout. We've been able to see real husbands and real wives. Somebody told us that to know a real husband I think I've ever said this before is when that man is not having money there you'll understand that this is a good husband if he's self-controlled, if he can settle in the home, if he's not going to look around for other women, and then a, a real woman, a good wife, you know them when there is no money. For a man, it's when there is abundant money. For a good wife, you know them when there is no money. So we thank God for the wives who have been good. Even when the conditions have been hard. They have stood in to support their husbands. May the Lord bless those women. There is hope. There is still hope. A summary of our sermon today. Amidst all uncertainty. Our God is still in charge. Our God still reigns. He is still on the throne. We are going to pull through in the name of Jesus. We shall testify about 2020. Because he is our refuge. He is our strength. Ever present.
present help in time of need. King David testified of this. And they want to testify that the Lord has remained faithful. Is my hope. Is my encouragement. For me one of the things I bank on is having hope for tomorrow. You can discourage me. <laughs> you can say whatever I want to say. But for me, I believe in a better tomorrow. Hallelujah. Amen. My life will be better tomorrow. Like it or not. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to bless the Lord for today. And I pray that this word will touch your hearts. Let's be strengthened in the Lord. Because his plans are good for us. We shall not die. We shall live to proclaim the glory of the Lord. Despite the situation around us, trust in the Lord. Believe in the Lord. Observe all the requirements, all the SOPs. But above all, know that God is in charge. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Amen.